Hello there, my name is Michael Christian Hartnett. I'm a film major, a film lover, and today I'm starting as a film reviewer. On this channel I've uploaded my student films, but today we're doing something different. I'm starting a film reviewing channel. I know, how original, no one's ever done it before. This is actually the first film reviewing channel on YouTube, so you're welcome. We're not going to be reviewing Doom 2 or Madam Web, any of those AAA blockbusters that are still in theaters. No, 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 no. You would never find a blockbuster on my film reviewing channel. I can bet you that. I can guarantee you that. Actually, I can promise you that. That's how much I that. No. Today and every review shall be based on the random DVD picks that I find at the Walmart DVD bin. $2.99 a pop, $1.99 a pop, anything that's basically lower than a root beer, I will pick out and I will watch and I will tell you how it is. I will go with Zia, look for the movies that are three bucks. I'll go the family dollar and pick out the most of movies that has to offer. I'll pass my arm through the dumpster of infinite DVD, passing through Charlie's Angels Full Throttle or Sharknado The Four Awakens, to truly go deep in there and find the je ne sais of mediocrity. The purest of mm, cinema. And today, we're starting with the 2011 indie coming of age film a bag, oh, a bag, a ba no, a bag of hammers. It's a, it's, that's what the movie is called. I grabbed this at a Dollar General for two bucks. Um, actually, I got it for free because I got a root beer with it. So, steal. Um, I like the cover. My uh, it's a nice yellow pop, it's blue and complimentary colors. Um. Uh, very funny, droll, quirky comedy with heart. Thanks, Joe Lydon, but you're wrong. Um, and so it looked fun. It looked like it was giving the same quirky attitude that Juno or Napoleon Dynamite has. It, ha it has that feeling. That is, and I've got a feeling that uh, the filmmakers really wanted it to be like Napoleon Dynamite, but it, it's not. It just kind of fails. Um, it has Rebecca Hall uh, from Iron Man 3 and The Prestige. And so I was like, oh, okay, that's, that, she's a movie. It's got to be at least some sort of, like, quality. Um, I looked it up on Letterboxd. It actually had some pretty good reviews. Uh, they said it was uh, very sad and that it made them cry, which is very weird because apparently Joe Lydon thought it was a quirky comedy and very funny. Joe Lydon, either you have a very twisted, t of twisted taste in humor or uh, Letterbox is wrong. I'm going to go with the first one. But let's not dilly-dally. No, 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 no. We're no dilly-dallying on my channel. We're going to start the summary. 20-something um, slacker buddies, Ben, Jason Ritter, and Alan, Jacob Slavage, seem incapable of growing up. And I love and the, the, the girl, um, one of the girls from Mean Girls is in it, actually. Which, big surprise. I mean... Usually they want to have the girl from Mean Girls right on the cover, but no, 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 it's actually a cameo. It's crazy. But she's like, you've got to grow up. You you need to stop being immature. And I feel like that's my favorite thing as movies. My favorite thing in movies is this, like when other characters tell the main character what they need to achieve, what their emotional journey is. Just flat out saying without any subtext what is wrong with them and like what the emotional journey they need to go on is. I mean, like such classic lines as, you should learn the true meaning of happiness through friendship. You need to grow up and learn maturity. I mean, impeccable screenplay. I mean, I'm not quite sure. I, I don't know how this didn't get nominated uh, or didn't win. Jeez, <sighs> the Oscars on. They run a valley parking scam and lease their rental house next door, allowing them to keep responsibility at bay. They, you may have caught a valley parking scam. Let me uh, go on that. 
they uh, wear suits outside of a graveyard and wait for family members that are attending a funeral at the graveyard to pull up at their sign that they have. It's a valet sign. And the family members of the uh, dead relatives are expecting to um, go to the funeral and um, leave their car, these 20-year-olds. Um, but no, they uh, just grab the car. They, it was a fake valet. They grab the car and they drive it out and they um, sell it for profit at like a uh, local um, auto shop. They sell other people's cars uh, to auto shop. That's great. I love that. Um, and yeah, they they they're not good people. Um, I mean they they do kind of transform. Um, but it's less. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a bad transformer. It's like an, their emotional journey is like a bad transformer. Um, it's like if a truck turned into a slightly smaller truck. That's kind of their emotional journey. They just they're basically the same people. Um, they do stop doing the valet parking scam, which I appreciate because it is Grand Theft Auto. That is that that's just Grand Theft Auto. They're committing Grand Theft Auto, and it's supposed and it's implied that they've been doing this for like a while. So they've sold so many family members that are grieving their car. Um, heck, I love that. I mean, it's not even saying that that's like a bad thing too much. Um, or that, not that, they're not saying it's bad, more that they're bad people. They're more treating it like it's like a pastime that all 20-year-olds have. Last time I checked, um, no, they don't. No, they goddamn don't. Um, no, uh, Grand Theft Auto is not very popular with the kiddos. Um, is that um a lot? Um, so when a stressed out single mom, Carrie Preston from Holdovers, Jesus Christ, and her young son, Kelsey, become their new tenants, and the misfit pals find a new friend in a precocious boy who's eager to help them in their Orsenius or business. Oh yeah, the, the small show I also want to predict in Grand Theft Auto. You know, get all those stars. But Alan's sister, Rebecca Hall, suspects Kelsey may be a neglected glash kid, and her intervention sets off a chain of startling events that may force the duo to event the family they've always needed. Featuring touchy castes from their dang cast, a bag of hammers is a hilarious offbeat comedy. Hilarious offbeat comedy? Well, they got something right. It's offbeat, but it's off the beat I want to be on. It's just, I don't think it's on the beat of anyone else's. It just, and uh, they also got wrong hilarious in comedy. It's not comedy. It's a drama. It's not funny. Um, Joe Layden, you liar. Um, it's not funny at all. They do that um, thing at, for. 30 minutes of the movie, it feels like. The beginning of the movie, at least. 10 minutes, like, the, the, the very first introduction. It's just characters rambling. They, they, obviously, the director really likes Quentin Tarantino and thinks that the best, the, the like, greatest thing of all his movies is when they talk about cheeseburgers or Madonna. Um, which is entertaining in his movies and very, like, great dialogue and one of the best parts of it. Um, but... When it's not being delivered by uh, John Travolta and Sam Jackson, surprise, surprise, it's boring. It's not entertaining. It's just, it's rambling because there's no point to what they're saying. They're just kind of, it, it just sounds like the worst conversation you've ever heard in your life. Uh, there's like a, just rambling, you know, endlessly. No entertainment, no comedy, comedy you know. Character-based dialogue is rambling. Anyways, um, so the mom, uh, she is a, um, she, uh, is, uh, in poverty with her, with her son, and she's trying to look for a job, um, and I've got to say, one of the best parts of this movie, actually, um, is... Carrie Preston. She's fantastic in this movie. She really gives a great performance. Um, unfortunately, I don't... Um, unfortunately, I feel like she sh kind of should have saved that performance for a better movie. Um, because it's very, it's very weird. Um, the uh, little kid befriends the older people. Uh, the, uh, the, what's, I watched the movies ten minutes ago. I already forgot the main character's names. Ben and Alan. Befriends Ben and Alan. And they're 
crimes, and uh, so the mom doesn't really do anything about it. And I get that it was trying to say something about like poverty and the job crisis and um, and uh, um, neglectfulness of parents, but it really just doesn't say anything about it. It really just says that that exists. It doesn't add anything to the conversation, just saying that neglectful parents exist. Also, um, spoiler alert, um, the mom, third scene basically, like three minutes in the movie, tries to kill herself. Um, and also, I'd like to note that my favorite character in the movie is uh, Monster Energy Drink, because you can find a goddamn Monster Energy Drink in every scene in this movie. Every establishing shot in this movie basically has a Monster Energy Drink. When, she's, when the mom's about to kill herself, Monster Energy Drink. When the when the mom is um it, uh won't feed their kid uh dinner monster energy drink like was this movie sponsored by energy energy drink does or does the director just hate monster energy drink is like oh yeah if you like monster energy drink you hate kids like what the or did they sponsor it and they're like all right great like yeah neglectful mom who who wants to kill herself great. Great sponsor. I mean, if you want to die, try a monster. I guess it. And later to this movie, um, and what's this was what well, no, basically every letterbox review I saw was about the last twenty minutes, and unfortunately, I didn't finish the movie, um, which is always a great thing to hear during review. I didn't finish it. Problem being is that it just doesn't grab your attention. It just. It's not original. The cinematography is boring. It's basically just set down and shoot, which is what I'm doing, but it, there's no life to the filmmaking. It's all the actors, and thankfully, the actors are pretty good. Rebecca Hall is great in it. And I mean, she's usually pretty good. Um, but the main two characters, there's just there's no life to them. They're, they're, they try to be uh, entertaining, but they just come off as gross and annoying. Also, I'm pretty sure the writer just discovered what the F word was. Made sure to use that. So it tries to become the next great perks of... It tries to be perks of being a wallflower. But um, it's just melodramatic. Sad. Definitely not hilarious. John Leiden. Die, John Leiden. Um... So yeah, it. The, I try. I watched the last twenty minutes. I skipped to that because well, that's what everyone was counting on, was how like sad and and it just kind of felt forced. It it has forced quirkiness. It's trying too hard to be five hundred days of summer, without getting why five hundred days of summer works. It's just ow, you know that's it. So I'm gonna give this movie a four point six out of fifteen point eight. And I hope you enjoyed my uh, rambling. Thank you for uh, my TED Talk.